Hey everybody, welcome to the Bacology YouTube channel. Here at Bacology, we don't just love our chickens, we love being as self-sufficient as possible in our day-to-day -day lives. That's why we love our Harvest Right freeze-dry machine. We can make ourselves quick cooking meals from whole ingredients with no preservatives, not only for food storage, but for everyday life as well. We will be sharing the recipes we use to create ourselves healthy meals from our freeze-dried ingredients, so hit the subscribe button to be notified when new videos are posted. In this video series, we will be creating single serving size meals from a pot of smoky Mexican black beans. In this first video, we're going to share the recipe we use to make our pot of beans, then show you how we got ready to freeze dry our ingredients. In the next video, we'll walk you through making four different recipes, Mexican black bean casserole, black bean tostadas, black bean tacos, and black bean sweet potato chili. Those meals that you see right there on the screen, those are the reconstituted meals. Here at Bacology, we make individual serving size meals because we eat these meals on a day-to-day -day basis. It's easy to make ourselves a quick lunch at home or at the office rather than grabbing fast food. Individual serving size meals can also be used by backpackers, students living in dorms, travelers, and seniors who want healthy food with very little prep work. In my setup, I ran almost all the ingredients in one batch on my medium machine. I ended up with eight large size meals. You can also prep and dry the ingredients for these meals in larger quantities with multiple batches. The meals can be upsized to serve two, three, or even a family. Just remember that you'll need to experiment with the water needed for rehydrating. Before we get started, I want to shout out to the creators of the recipes that inspired the meals I made with my freeze dried black beans. First, the smoky Mexican black bean recipe is from Flavorful Eats. You can use your favorite black bean recipe, but I recommend trying this one. It has amazing flavor. The black bean casserole recipe is inspired from a recipe by Simple Green Moms. The black bean tostada recipe is inspired by a recipe from Love and Good Stuff. The Southwest black bean tacos are inspired by a recipe from Like a Bubbling Brook. And the black bean and sweet potato chili recipe is inspired from a recipe from Nora Cooks. Let's get started. Here's the shopping list for ingredients I used in the black bean meals. If you have a large supply of any of these ingredients freeze dried, use those. To make this from scratch, you will need two pounds of dried black beans, a bag of brown rice, a small bag of frozen sweet potatoes, a small bag of frozen sweet corn, one green bell pepper, one red bell pepper, two large onions, two jalapeno peppers, three avocados, two limes, one head of garlic, a fresh bunch of cilantro, a jar of salsa of your choice, or you can use homemade, one can of chipotle peppers, one 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes, and vegetable broth. You will also need the following spices, both when you create your original pot of beans and when you put your freeze dried recipes together. You'll need bay leaves, chili powder, smoked paprika, cumin, black pepper, and salt. And for serving day, you're gonna need tostada shells, taco shells, shredded lettuce, and shredded cheese. If you have freeze dried cheese, you can use that in your recipes. Just be aware that you may have to add a little extra water when you reconstitute it. Let's get started on our smoky Mexican black beans. Since we're using dried beans, we need to soak these overnight, then rinse and sort out any broken beans. As for cooking, I find that freeze dried beans will be very fragile and I like to pressure cook them with a quick release because I feel that helps them stand up better after the freeze dry process. The original recipe actually calls for slow cooking them and you can do that as well. You're going to add your soaked beans to whatever pot you're going to use to cook them. To our pot of black beans, we're going to add two bay leaves, six grinds of black pepper, one tablespoon of chili powder, one and a half tablespoons of smoked paprika, two tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of cumin, and a handful of chopped cilantro. I do want to take a minute to talk about the salt in this recipe. 
Some of you may have heard that you shouldn't add salt when cooking beans, and others of you may worry that the freeze-dry process will concentrate the salt content and cause your beans to taste too salty. I can tell you that in my experience, adding salt to the beans has not affected the outcome of the beans. You should always use your best judgment when adding salt to your food. Next, add to your pot two chipotle peppers, one large onion diced, two sliced jalapenos, and four cloves of garlic diced. Finally, you're gonna add eight cups of vegetable broth or chicken or beef broth, whatever you prefer. If you're pressure cooking, go ahead and cook on high for 45 minutes, then do a quick release or slow cook for eight hours. After you get your beans cooking, you need to cook three cups of brown rice. You can use your normal rice method. I use my Instapot and get consistent results every time. We're gonna start preparing our other ingredients needed for our recipes. I like to use silicone molds to pre-freeze liquid items. I got these molds in the cake decorating section of my local craft store. The smaller mold holds about one tablespoon in each cavity and the larger mold holds about two tablespoons in each cavity. Place one tablespoon of salsa into each cavity of the mold, then place the mold into the freezer to pre-freeze. Peel and slice the three avocados into a bowl, then add the juice of the two limes. Mash the mixture with a fork. You don't want it too smooth as you're going to want some chunks in some of these recipes. Place about two tablespoons of the avocado mixture into each cavity of the mold. Place the mold into the freezer with the salsa. Place your diced tomatoes into a silicone mold and place in the freezer. The amount per cavity doesn't matter as long as your frozen block stays below the rim of your freeze dry tray. Next, dice your second large onion, the red and green pepper, and two cloves of garlic. You are going to heat a pan on your stove over medium high heat and saute your veggies. Do not use too much oil. I just used a spritz. Uh, too much oil may cause your vegetables to be a little bit limp, which may affect the final product. Saute the onion and garlic until the onion starts to soften and turn brown, and then set that aside and saute your peppers. It's time to start loading up the freeze-dried trays. I started by pouring the frozen corn and sweet potatoes on a single tray. They will take up about two thirds of the tray. Be sure to leave space for other ingredients on this tray. After cooking, you should have about six cups of rice and it will fill an entire tray. Your beans can also fill up a second entire tray. I recommend that versus what I decided to do for some odd reason. Add your cooked vegetables to a tray and then let that all cool. We're gonna add these trays to deep freeze to pre-freeze them. And you're gonna add your pre-frozen salsa, avocado, and tomatoes. As you can see, I forgot to add my tomatoes. It's okay, I had some freeze-dried diced tomatoes on hand already. Place your trays into deep freeze for several hours or overnight. Then place trays into your machine and run a cycle. I did not do a custom cycle or add any dry time to my load. Just be sure to check for doneness when your load is finished and add more time if needed. Here are my completed trays after pulling from the freeze dry cycle. You will notice my rice has shrank quite a bit. Since the sweet potatoes are a bit large, make sure you check them before shutting down your machine. The freeze dry process was complete. I placed all my freeze dried ingredients into containers so they'll be easy to create our meals. If you can't create your recipes right away, go ahead and seal your ingredients until you're ready. After the process, I ended up with about nine cups of beans, six and a half cups of rice, two cups of corn, one cup of the onion and garlic mixture, two cups of peppers, and three cups of sweet potatoes. Based on the recipes I use, that equals about eight meals plus a little bit left over. In my next video, we're going to use our freeze-dried ingredients to create our four individual-sized meals. I can't wait to see you then.